Hey, what exactly is in those documents? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on this voyage to truth and freedom. Turn on the notification bell right now. And if you want to have a real laugh about the craziness of the last couple of years, check out my special, Brandemic, about the madness and lies of the pandemic. There are actual lies. You're going to love it. It's completely self-funded and uncensored. I'd love you to check it out. I spoke to Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger, the Twitter files journalists who broke the important stories that have shown us just how much the government deep state and social media cooperate and conspire in order to censor you and true information. I spoke to them about Trump and Trump's boxes. What exactly is in those boxes? Why are we being surveilled and censored? Instead of focusing on the person, why not focus on the content of the boxes? What imperialist projects are being pursued? And is the state simply trying to bring down Trump because he's a voice they don't like? And I ain't no MAGA hat guy. I'm a democracy guy. I'm a freedom guy. You're going to love this conversation with Tybee and Schellenberger. And if you want to see me in conversation with them, that's happening. There's a link in the description to that as well. Stay to the end. Now, both of you, are the, you're two of my favorite journalists. Uh, that's why we are uh, p appearing together in an event named uh, cen The Censorship in Industrial Complex Exposed in London on Thursday the 22nd of June. We'll be covering a variety of topics then. Today, though, we're talking somewhat about uh, Donald Trump's indictment, impeachment, whatever it is he's going for, arraignment, a variety of polysyllabic and perjurative terms. W uh, why shouldn't uh, Donald Trump have those documents? What is the, um, the classification of documents, the control of information by institutions that no longer have our trust seems to be a more important issue than this one. Michael, what do you think about the, the, the current case? Yeah, I mean, look, I think that this case, like a lot of others, um, raises some serious questions around uh, the abuse of power uh, by government officials. Um, I don't know the specifics of it, but I think that when we look at sort of the cases that we've been following, whether it's the COVID origins, whether it's the Hunter Biden laptop, Russiagate, many other issues, we're seeing the institutions, and we've seen now in Britain that they were that the, the UK government was engaged in similar censorship activities as the US government. We've been also talking about the FBI whistleblowers. I mean, we are seeing significant abuses of power, uh, disinformation, censorship coming from our governments around the world. It's just time to, we need reform. I mean, we need to clean house. These government institutions are being run by people who act like they own them or that they have some special privilege, but we need to reassert our democratic rights over these very powerful institutions because I think the evidence is growing that, that we've been lied to for many years um, and that the people that have been lying to us have also been trying to censor us. You're both coming to the UK next week for the event that we've discussed that we'll be showing on Rumble in the days to come. Kit Clarenberg was interrogated for five hours when he was traveling. Matt, you were threatened with arrest subsequent to your congressional appearance. Are you not concerned that you'll be detained? And what are your feelings about latex gloves? And have you been acquainted with them previously? <laughs> Not recently, although thank thank you for um, you know planting that image in my mind. Um, <laughs> but uh, well, look, here's what I'll say: I, I, maybe three weeks or a month ago, I would. Of course, not have been concerned about that at all. I would have laughed at the mere possibility uh, that this was even something to worry about. But uh, I am concerned now. I mean, we're we're we have reason to be worried about it. Uh, we had a ridiculous incident where um, the IRS visited my house. I was I was investigated after um, you know one of the, the Twitter file stories, and uh, you know the, the Kit Clarenberg. Um, is part of an organization that was on a list that we saw in the Twitter files was delivered uh, to Twitter from the Ukrainian security agencies through the FBI. So it's hard not to, you know, wonder, you know, are, are we next? I mean, you can, you can get on those lists for any number of reasons, and that that's that's very concerning. Fear sometimes makes me seek out 
alliances. A lot of the people watching this now on Locals, you can join us on Locals by pressing the red button, feel that what's happening around Donald Trump, who gave you a name check the other day, of course, um, Matt, is little more than a witch hunt. Do you, uh, are you able to maintain your impartial perspective as journalists when it seems clear that when it comes to the censorship industrial complex, it's primarily an issue that seems to be undergirded and exacted by the Democrat Party? That question for you first, uh, Michael. Yeah, I mean, I think this is part of the thing that we're worried about, which is that we're seeing potentially double standards being used um, along with this abuse of power. So we're seeing, you know, here we are, we now uh, think there's pretty good evidence, uh, or at least there is evidence that's been presented of uh, potential criminal bribery involving uh, President Biden when he was vice president. The FBI withheld that document and that information from Congress for many weeks. Congress had to threaten contempt of, of Congress uh, against the FBI director and so now we're seeing the prosecution of a former president. Um, I mean, some of those charges are very serious, so I don't want to suggest that there isn't something serious there, but all of, all of us that have lived in other countries, you know, Matt spent a bunch of time in Russia, I've lived in Latin America and been in Asia, and you see former heads of state going to prison and a kind of constant cycle of retribution, and I worry about that. I worry that we're becoming a ban banana republic and in both in the abuse of power by by policymakers and politicians and unelected officials, but also um, in this kind of desire to to persecute and prosecute your political enemies. It seems that there's no legitimacy to the authority once wielded by these institutions. I don't imagine that any of us suppose that whatever the outcome of next year's election, the side that loses will gracefully concede. What's likely to ensue is a series of allegations of corruption or foreign involvement or meddling. Is that not an indication that the institution of democracy itself needs to be radically ordered, that there needs to be significant change to uh, within the, to the the duopoly that currently endures, what well, well, what do you think about that, Matt? What do you both think about that? I think that's definitely true. Um, you know, I, I first noticed that uh, as a campaign trail reporter, uh, probably two election cycles ago. I started to hear a lot of complaints from people, frankly, on both sides of the aisle, uh, who were saying they they were losing confidence in institutions like the Fed. Um, you know, Congress, absolutely. Then, then it became the FBI. Then, it, then it was you know just the criminal justice system in general. Everybody was upset at the the, the intelligence agencies because of the Snowden revelations, the the surveillance uh, revelations. Now, with the censorship stuff, in addition to the general distrust of government institutions, we have almost total. Uh, distrust in, uh, you know, the liberalizing institution of media. Nobody knows what to think anymore about anything because um, almost all the information that comes out now is politicized and, and not terribly reliable. And that is a terrible situation for a country to be in because you can't trust anything. I mean, you know, even the results of elections, uh, forget about the 2020 general election. I, I, I was there for the Iowa caucus uh, in, in, in 2020, and I still don't know who won that election. You know, I mean, it's impossible to know now. And that, and, and that makes it very, very difficult in a democracy for people to, to know how to act if, they, if they're not informed. Somehow this uncertainty appears to be beneficial to the centralised authority and the doubling down of authoritarianism, particularly with regard to the issue that uh, is going to be uniting us on June the 22nd. Uh, it seems to legitimise censorship somehow. This constant talk of corruption, misinformation, fake news is legitimising publicly funded media organisations like the BBC in their endeavour to censor and adjudicate which information is viable. Uh, take a figure like RFK, who's a, a, a radical outsider, one assumes, in spite of the surname. When he came on our show, he said stuff about the pandemic, its funding and its 
aims and its execution that even for me, a hardened old conspiracy theorist of your to listen to, do you ever think of going... F I mean, it's difficult to imagine how much further you could go, the pair of you. I mean, I saw you... The, I basically agree with Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She's a good woman. She saw through the pair of you. She called it as she saw it. She did democracy a great service that day. But are you willing to investigate even more uh, seemingly outrageous claims? Uh, like, uh, uh, for example, some of the RFK ones. You must be uh, familiar with them, uh, Michael. Because I'm doing this in turns, but this is how I'm going to do it on the night. See? Fair. One turn <laughs> each. You know? Yeah, I mean, look, I was going to say, too, I think that, um, look, we have a really great system of government in the United States, but it does need to be periodically reformed and refreshed. And we saw about 50 years ago the uh, church committee hearings, which basically demanded a significant reform by FBI and CIA. Um, we also saw a flowering of journalism in that period. Um, we need we are not seeing that flowering of journalism coming from the big newspapers it's not coming from the washington post or new york times in fact they've been perpetuating misinformation including around hunter biden's laptop the COVID origins issue the russia gate but i think that you see a bunch of new players uh matt and i i mean the benefits of having been sort of attacked by debbie wasserman schultz in early march as matt and i were is that there's we've we've had a number of whistleblowers come forward and they don't trust the big newspapers they would rather work with matt and me who have proven that we will protect our whistleblowers and our sources and our witnesses we're very careful so i do think we have the potential to enter into a new age of journalism a new golden age but i don't think it'll be coming from the establishment i think it'll be coming from people at places like Substack and at Twitter. Well, let me know what you thought of that. Remember, we're on Rumble every single day. Share these videos with your friends. If you enjoyed this one, have a look at either of these. More important than any of that is that you please stay free.